Wow, guys, we are back for another episode of the Liberal Asshole Show, episode 48. So, what are today's topics? Russo Ukraine war update, Supreme Court trying to kill Roe vs. Wade, Henry Gasparian's righteous fury, Greg Duffel being stupid, Lindsey Graham gets wrecked. Oh, God, why are we talking about Blair White again? Because she's an idiot. Public schools. Because she's an idiot. You know that. <laughs> it's something especially egregious this time. So, anyways, before we get to that, we got to talk about the main thing, the Russo-Ukraine war, as here is the update map, which, once again, does not really show anything different from last week. And, of course, we got to keep an eye out on um, Monday, because that'll be May 9th, which is a very big holiday what? in Russia for um, winning World War II and all that. So there hasn't been any changes that we know of so far. So it looks like maybe their offense in Donbass has stalled too finally. As Ukraine yeah. still as Ukraine is still moving up north near um Kirk I mean Kirkov or whatever it was called. And Kyrson down the south still. And I I don't still know fight, we still fight, um we still got the fight in um the steelworks of Mariupol. Yeah, that is still somehow holding on after all these months. And yeah. I, I heard this on, like, a whole bunch of, like, really stupid, um, like, over-sensationalist, like, YouTube videos. So I don't want to really take it, like, at face value. But if what they said is even partially correct, they might have took down another Russian ship recently. But like I said, they're, over, they're like... Oh. They're like really sensationalist, like YouTube videos, and I and they've popped oh. up a lot because of the war. So I really don't want to take them seriously, but that is a possibility. Oh, and, that'd be awesome. Yep. And also, have you heard recently what Sergey Lavrov just did? Possibly. He pissed off Israel immensely recently. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So, anyways, okay. There is. One tiny kernel of truth in what he said. And that was that Israel has been, not has been, oh, I guess you can maybe say accidentally, funding the hands of battalion. But that's it. That's the only thing that can be connection you can make, is that some of the weapons sent by Israel to Ukraine have wound up in the hands of the hands of battalion. Yeah, that's quite it. To yeah. use that then claim the um the fucking pro not that the Jewish state created because of the Holocaust is pro Nazi. It was and like, they're using they're literally butchering the word Nazi even worse than some oversensitive liberals did back in the day. Yeah, and also another from what I remember, it was about him. He was like trying to say that, um, because remember the argument that people said about Zelensky's not a Nazi and Ukraine's not a Nazi because he's Jewish and all that. And I'm gonna be as honest, that's really a stupid and not convincing argument. There are, his, there have been historically Jews that were Nazis and other groups of such. There's always yeah. groups that hate each themselves, basically. So that really is yeah. not a good argument. Okay, there so are. So. Yeah, there are. That's not a good argument, but of course, I don't think he is at all. And no, his no, argument. The tankies believe that all Ukrainians are neo Nazis. And that's why um, the population of Ukraine is meant to be genocide. Yep, so it pit. Not a Nazi, Nazi terrorist state and want to join the Nazi American terrorist organization. Oh, yeah, it reminds me. A lot of tankies seem to believe that. NATO invades countries and forces them to join NATO instead of it uh, being a voluntary thing. I what they talk about NATO is when they think like NATO is invading countries and forcing them to join. When it's Russia that's doing that. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see the excuses they make if Sweden and Finland join soon. <laughs> oh, they already are. the... What? Oh, we'll see what we'll see what has and Jacob Hickey has to, has to <laughs> Yeah, so anyways, Lavrov kinda implied that the Jew, um Jews themselves 
killed themselves pretty much in the Holocaust, which was really funny. <laughs> Ah, and it pissed, and it, the and it was it pissed off Israel so badly that Putin had to make a non-apology apology to calm them down. It was so funny. <laughs> and awesome. Uh. Uh, so yeah, we gotta see about the progress right now since there's not been any change in the last few weeks. Effectively, it's point. Yep. The Russians can't um, push on more daunting, push on more daunting, and um, finish off Mariupol so they can put the rest of Mariupol under Sharia law, um, and not able to push on to towards Moldova. But at the same time, Ukraine is not able to make much progress either. It's, it's a struggle at this point. Yep. So. Nothing else we can say about that. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens on Monday for May 9th and see what Russia does then. All right, so I guess we've done me finish that topic. Now to get on to a topic. This one is this one actually this one actually has like three topics into one. Like the next three yeah. topics are involved in it. So of course, we actually covered this remember back like in October, November. The Supreme yeah. Court is trying to overrule Roe v. Wade which allowed legal abortion across America. Now, of course, we covered it back in October, November or so, and we said, I found out is that a, a ruling on it was not going to happen until, like, June, which we are coming up to, and nothing's happened yet, but a few days ago, a memo got leaked from the Supreme Court revealing that they pretty much are going to do that, um, overturn Roe v. Wade. And if they do that, now, of course... Just so you all know, if they did overturn Roe v. Wade, it's not going to, like, ban abortion across America. No. It's just going to go back to the state's um, choice, which, unfortunately, like, 26 states will make it illegal in some way or another. But the rest of the states, it is legal. Like, if you're a Marylander like me, you can get abortion however you want. And, of course, all the states that have abortion already, like, codified in their state laws are making it even stronger now. Hell, Maryland just did that. Last month, which Hogan vetoed and it was overridden. So, yeah. So, yeah. This is really, really bad. And, of course, we see Mike and Kyle and all the other YouTubers on Twitter and such have showed so many polls that guess how many Americans actually want Roe v. Wade overturned? Like, 8% or something. Yeah, that actually is true. It was like, nine, like not even 10% wanted it overruled. And, mm. and, and the states and I actually found another poll that how many people in each state wanted to actually ban abortion. The best case scenario, like in the South, was like, in some states, like 30%. So... Oh, is that even a majority? Yeah, because guys, we've covered this before. I actually saw a recent poll, I mean, recent polls on this. It was like, um, 48% of abortions... All right. No, it was 40 percent of Americans think abortion should be legal in some circumstances. That used to be like fifty percent. It's going down. Whereas thirty two percent of people Americans think abortion should be legal in all cases. It used to be thirty, so that's going up. People think it should be legal in only certain circumstances going down. But guess what? It's still nineteen percent of Americans that want banned entirely. So that means yep, over prefer the, the fetus files and prefer the life of the baby over the life of the mother, even if it's a defect, I mean, the lives be painful and short, even if they're born. So, that means, in some form, guys, at least 80% of Americans think abortion should be legal. And yet, the Supreme Court is trying to do the exact opposite of what Americans want. And, of course, it's causing a huge backlash hopefully destroying the credibility of the Supreme Court, which is why we need to get rid of all those conservative judges ASAP and stuff the courts to get them on our side again. And, and of course, yeah. this... And, and another thing, too, this might actually help the Democrats soften the blow of the Republicans winning in two, later on this year in the midterms. Because this is going to really get them out. Now the, okay. my, now, the only problem is, is that, like, all this anger that people are having... The election's still six months from now. I would not be surprised if people subside from the anger 
and not care about it by the time of November. If this happened more now, I mean, like in October, then that would be huge. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to have the mom continue the momentum because people are just not going to care about this shit. Like, Republicans have done so many horrible things over the years, yet people still fucking vote for them because they're fucking stupid. And yeah, they're crap. They, 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 they people that... Uh, they look like them. Or they themselves as well. And, it, and then the funny thing is, because this leak happened, now um, conservatives realizing that they are not going to win this argument because the majority of Americans are against them. Now all they're doing, instead of celebrating that they might have Roe v. Wade finally overruled, they're crying about the leak. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. They are having a complete and utter meltdown over it. They're acting like this is just as bad as like Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning, for God's sake. It is insane. And, and, and oh my God. Oh, geez. That reminds me. Tulsi Gabbard just recently did a video oh. where she thinks they should be, whoever leaked it should be prosecuted. Oh my yeah, God, Tulsi. So what right. the oh. fuck? It is wrong with you. Hey, bitch. No, I don't care if it hurts the Supreme Court's legitimacy and feelings, whatever. I don't give a fuck. This is needed to know because this is just wrong. And they need to face severe pressure, especially someone like Clarence Thomas, who should be impeached for all the crap that we covered a few weeks ago or whatever it was. Like, we can't let them get away with this. And then, of course... Whole bunch no. of whole bunch of progressives, even Mike, are being like, "Oh yeah, that reminds me, you actually covered it too when we posted up here just a bit ago." The language they used to um override Ro Roe v. Wade easily can be used for anything else. The the wording they used to overrule um Roe v. Wade can easily be used to overrule the Supreme Court rulings on using I mean legal contraceptives, gay marriage. Um, interracial marriage, sodomy laws, because the yep. exact same argument Roe v. Wade uses was the exact same one they did. Now, of That's course, now, of course, now, of course, now, I also want everyone to calm down a little bit, too, and also realize that they're not going to easily get away with it in that regard, too, because the majority of Americans even more support those other things compared to, like, um, abortion. Like, here's another good example. Like, like Mike brought up, like, oh, um, he's afraid that Republicans, maybe in 2022, if they win, they'll try and make it illegal, make, make it, like, a law for the country. Federal, make it, make, um, gay marriage ban. And sure, Biden is president right now, so he would veto it. But what if, like, Trump wins in 2024 and make gay marriage illegal, federally? Here's the thing, though. States can just ignore it. And by the way, states have ignored that. Like, historically, even with gay marriage, because remember, gay marriage was illegal in America until 2015, but states from 2004 to 2015 did legalize it on the state level. And did the government try to go after them for it? No. Yeah. Even with Bush. And then, of course, here's an even bigger one. Weed. Weed is still illegal on the federal level. Yet, look how many states legalize it and define the federal government. Even with Trump in office and Jeff Sessions, who was strong, who wanted, who was a hardcore drug warrior, even they didn't go after states that legalized weed. So, even if they did make it illegal, we could still defy it. And also, the majority of Americans are on our side. We cover it. But like It was like 70% of Americans want weed legalized. We just cover it now. 80% of Americans want abortion legal in some regards and that's probably going to go up now because of this like 70% like like 70 of Americans think gay right I mean gay marriage should be allowed and I even just looked at the um states again recently of all the states only I think it was two states no one state still had majority against gay marriage two of them I think it was Alabama it was like 51% still against it right yeah it was like 51% were still against it 41% were for it and then there was two states that were plurality against it and then one was a tie and the other two were plurality supporting it like less than 50% each way but the rest of the states but the other 44 states it's over 50% gay marriage support. So, like, almost... So, 
if you think about it, only three states, and if you want to be honest with it, only one really is truly against gay marriage still. So the majority of Americans are for gay marriage, and of course, like, um, sodomy laws, which is non-vaginal sex. Um, by sodomy laws, I'm not even kidding you. You, can lit you want to know what sodomy can be and has been considered in some areas. Yeah, for all of you don't know, sodomy is non- Non-missionary style, intercourse with lights off, lasting between 7 and 10 minutes, but only for the purposes of reproduction. And yeah. all five of the departments was considered sodomy. Yeah, sodomy is non-vaginal sex, so all of us men who... Even become, even become vaginal. vaginal. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. So even, so even us heterosexual men, like if a woman blew us, for example, or if we did anal to them, that's sodomy. That would be illegal if sodomy laws we're, were back. We're in the wrong position. Yep. It so, sodomy and some areas too. but yes, um, sodomy, uh, interracial marriage and contraceptives. That's like, think like up to like eighty to ninety percent of Americans oh. are are support yeah. those things. So, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised even if they tried to do that, like overrule, I mean, override all these things and somehow try to make them illegal. Unless the government straight up tries to crack down on them forcibly, which. They do have the right to do it, but they have to do it. That's going to cause a severe backlash, and that would really hurt them. Which is why we need to use this to make sure the Republicans do not win at all to make sure Roe v. Wade is safe. Which, by the way, Biden and Democrats, you have the numbers to codify Roe v. Wade into law to make it more likely to survive, but you're not doing it. And, and make, make absolutely, absolutely sure that, that mansion and cinema... cinema. Yeah. Oh, and also stop supporting pro-life Democrats like Pelosi and the other yeah. Democrats she's supporting. Shows how much of a hypocrite you are when you claim to be for women's rights, yet and yet you hypocritically support Democrats that are against abortion. Fucking pathetic. All right. So hopefully it fails. Because remember, this is just a draft. It still can technically change. Anything can happen, but but still assume the worst. But right now, we still don't know, and it's probably going to take another two months before we know for sure. But for all you women in all these states, be very careful and possibly move somewhere else. Especially if you're down in my area, come to Maryland, where now abortion's even more easier to get and all that. So now, as I said, this topic is now going on to another topic. Now we get to watch... Anna Kasparian from TYT actually do something right for once. First time in years I've seen her actually be good in this regard. As she just tore both Republicans and Democrats and the squad too for being fucking pathetic. And this is yeah. righteous fury. <laughs> and of course, oh my god, all the cons... And of course... All and of course, all the whiny conservatives are be being like, using her as like a misogynistic trope about women complaining all the time and stuff like that. All she has is emotional. Here we go. So let's watch Anna's righteous fury. Here we go. So let's watch Anna's righteous fury. They're reaching themselves. They're good. They're good. They don't care about you. Make, Make sure, sure you understand, understand that and you feel, feel it in your bones, bones. They, they don't, don't care, care about you. you. Young Turks host Anna Kasparian is making headlines, including on Fox News, for a passionate rebuke of Republican and Democratic lawmakers over the recent news that the Supreme Court is about to overturn Roe v. Wade. Now, I have a couple of clips here to share, the one that's gone viral and another one that Fox News references in their coverage. But, but first, here, before I get to the first uh, clip, clip, I want to share this, this resource that um, Anna Kasparian actually shared out yesterday during one of her segments, because, because this, this is the most important thing. thing. So, so tyt.com slash mybody, my, body, my, my body, choice, choice. Resources, resources here in terms of those being impacted, potentially impacted by this uh, soon-to-be decision. So go there, check this out, and send this to others as well. I will link to it below the video. Fantastic links here to help um, people out in the... Uh, what, what will, will be, be a devastating, devastating decision. decision. Now, 
me get, get to the, the first, first clip. clip. So, so this, this is the one that's, that's gone viral. viral. This, this is this has over a million views on Twitter. Twitter. I'm sure it has more because people clip the video out and do their own separate videos. So a lot more than just a million. But regardless, this is a fantastic moment here. The day that this news first broke. We don't even have affordable childcare in this freaking country. Okay, and the people who fight against those kinds of laws are Republicans. And yet, what do you want them to do with their kids when they have to go to work? They don't. What do you they want, want, you, want you to do. Anna, they want you to die. They want you to die. They don't care about you. They hate you and want you dead. I love, I love watching you die. Oh, no, no. If your kids still kids age and they're Catholic, the Catholic wants to rape them. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? amazing? Ask them the goddamn question. They don't care. Isn't, isn't, isn't it amazing, amazing that, that not, not one, one Democrat has shown one percent of the passion that Anna has today? They don't care. They're they don't fine. Care. They're they fine. They're, they don't fine. Care. they're all so old they're gonna have to worry about it affecting them. And if they're young enough, where it would affect them, they'll get their abortion. They're gonna okay? find a They're Paris. trading individual stocks, enriching themselves. They're good. They're good. They don't care about you. Make sure you understand that you feel it in your bones. They don't care about you at all. All of that fundraising, all of that canvassing, all of that hard work on the ground, they can't even get a voting rights bill passed. They're losers. Trusha Briggs writes in, thank you, Anna, for communicating this momentous injustice and the rage we're all feeling today. That's exactly right. And you got to ask yourself a question. Why is no one else enraged? That was an awesome rant by Anna. And also, you know what else is also applies this to not just Roe v. Wade, Nina Turner, which unfortunately she ran recently and she lost to Chantal Brown. Uh, Chantel Brown again, unfortunately, and it doesn't uh, help that the fucking squad and the progressive caucus didn't support Nina. They support Chantel Brown is dead. Fucking because pathetic. They're, because they're, because they're, because they're corporate, corporate Democrats, Democrats now. They just they're don't take corporate, corporate PAC money. money. They're fucking. You've got to get rid of them. You've got to get rid of them. Pretty bad at AOC, and I think. We can take out the justice the. Now here's the question. Now here's the question, Anna. Will you actually support us in that regard? Because remember when people point that out to you, you ca you call them like doorknobs and stuff like that. Remember? Mm -hmm. But I have a funny feeling she probably won't be doing that. And also, I'm gonna be a dick here, Anna. But it is kind of true. You are partially responsible for this because. You guys are in California. You voted for Hillary and Biden, for example, when you knew they were corrupt and weak. And I'm sure, I, I actually, no, I think you're in the L.A. area, so it wouldn't apply to Pelosi. But I wouldn't be surprised if you were in Pelosi's area, you probably would support her for crying out loud. Like, you guys are also part of the problem. You mm -hmm. criticize these Democrats all the time, yet you keep voting for them. And you can't use the argument about, ooh, we're going to stop Trump and all that. You're in California. California is never going to go to Trump. They're, you're in a deep blue state. Nothing's going to happen. So vote for your conscience, like me, in Maryland, and vote for an actual progressive. That way you won't feel guilty about what you've done, which I don't have to. You have to learn to say no at some point. If you don't support what I want, then you're not going to get my vote no matter what. And if you lose, that's your fault. You need to start having standards. Instead of saying, oh, you're fascist if you don't support Democrats no matter what. Which, by the way, you at TYT did do that in 16 and 20. And that's why a lot of the, us progressives don't really like you that much anymore. And that's why you people, you people, and that's why TYT, you're not leftists. You're right-wing dipshits, dude. Who pretend yeah. to like... Policies. Oh, a reminder, I have a second clip coming up that I think is equally fantastic, but before I get there, this was me. And you can see why people are shooting sure. why they feel connected to this, because this is exactly how they feel, the anger they are feeling. 
and, and you, you do, do not, not often, often or ever, ever see this from, from reporters, from, from journalists, journalists, from, from hosts, hosts, anchors, anchors and media. media. They, they always try and play it cool, try and play it neutral. Yeah, because they're all, they're Your job all as somebody in the press is, is to represent, represent the people, people represent, represent society against the powerful. powerful. Anna, Anna does, does that, that better than, than anyone I've seen. seen. No, now, yes, yes, there are journalists out there whose job isn't to, you know, you know just do just opinion, opinion, and I understand that. that. But, but when, when it comes, comes to anchors, anchors, when it comes to hosting and discussing the news and how this impacts society, this, this is the is kind of, of anger, anger and passion you should, should be seeing from people, from people in media, and you, and you simply, simply do not see it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and look, look, it's, it's directly here at both parties, parties for, for good, good reason. reason. For one, Republicans, Republicans you, know, you know, they're the they're ones, ones, this is their this issue. issue. They're, they're trying to turn the U.S. to a theocracy, so obviously they deserve a lot of anger here. And of course, they don't care at all about helping people once they have the child. But even apart from that, the Democratic Party, they're in power. They have the White House, they have Congress. What are they doing? Now you, now can, you can say, say oh, sure, oh, sure. Mansion, mansion, cinema, cinema. What, what is Biden going to do? do? Look, Look at, at what, what the Republican Party right now is doing to Madison Cawthorn. All, All of the, the oppo research, research they're releasing about him, him because, because he, he made the mistake of discussing, of discussing their, their drug, drug use and bedroom escapades. So now that... And here's an even better example. Trump. Look what Trump did. He pretty much cucked the entire party to do what he wants. That's why they went along with the big lie and were involved in cahoots with January 6th. See, that's what happens when you actually have a spine and force people to do what you want. That's what Trump did, and that's what Republicans do. Democrats don't. And that's why we need to replace them with progressives who will do that. Like Nina Turner, but of course, you yeah. guys wouldn't support her. You... Fucking, oh my god, I just make me so angry. They are trying to destroy me. Or should I say the fucking Brit squad at this point? Careful, they'll call you a misogynist for that. But see, he is a grifter, they're not though, remember? I can't do that. The might have some union, pro-union stuff. That seems to be a big It will have got this mind. Democrats did that about mansion, about cinema. You don't think there are skeletons in their closet? Or even just open ones? Mansions. Daughter and the corruption over the EpiPen scandal. There are actual things they can do publicly and behind the scenes to put pressure on them. And they are simply not doing it. So, so this, this anger, anger is, is completely, completely warranted. warranted. Now, now, I want to show you first give credit to Zeke Gonzalez, Gonzalez here, here, who initially, initially shared sure. this clip, this clipped it out, and it was, um, um I'll also show you in a second, second here, shared, shared by a conservative who tried, who tried to, to criticize it, but then got, uh, uh rebuked himself, himself in the comments. In the comments. But, um, um <laughs> so Zeke shared this out and then made a headline on Real Clear Politics. Yashir, Yashir Ali, Ali journalist, journalist for uh, New York New Magazine, Magazine HuffPost, Post, also, also shared it out in a positive, positive framing. framing. And then, and then you then had, had um, conservative, conservative here calling, calling it a meltdown. A meltdown. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is... is... <laughs> Seeing people... Yeah, conservatives are melting down, down about the lady. lady. Yeah, you guys melt down all the time, so... Oh, no! Ian, it's Ian Miles Chung! No! Oh, 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 oh man. The passionate and angry about issues that actually affect society is a foreign idea to conservatives. They can't imagine anyone actually caring because they themselves are sociopaths. So when they see somebody angry about something that will actually negatively impact and lead to the deaths of more women, they call that a meltdown. Now, if now, you go, if you go through, through, I'll link to this, this all my sources. sources. I always, always, always link below the video. video. So, you so you can go, go through this um, and, and check, check out the replies. The vast, the vast majority of them are just completely tearing him apart. <laughs> because it's, it's obvious, obvious here, here that, that uh, he, actually he actually cares. cares or that, that sorry, that, that Anna, Anna actually cares. cares and people also sharing this, like Zeke, actually care about this issue and how it's going to impact society. Now, just to put a pin on that point, that, that conservative, conservative who shared it out, out also lives, lives in Malaysia, Malaysia where, where they do in fact have access to legally mandated paid family, family leave. leave. So, so even if he did care about this, which I don't think he does, but even if he did, he, he is, is not, not at all impacted, impacted by, by this issue. issue. 
Now, now let me get to Fox, Fox News. So, so Fox, Fox News, News covered this, this as well, well but, but they, also they also covered a much larger, larger clip because, of course, they have to make it more about Democrats. About Democrats. So, so <laughs> in their in headline, headline, they write, they write progressive, progressive Young, young Turk host says, says she's, she's done, done with Democrats, Democrats including the squad, squad disgusting, disgusting, feckless. feckless. So, so I'll, I'll link to their full segment below this video. How much you want to bet, even though she said that, watch 2024 comes around, she'll probably vote for Biden and all those idiots. I guarantee you she'll do that. She'll be a fucking right-wing bitch again. ...video as well, so you can watch the entire thing. But, um, yeah, she went on to blast, you know, Biden, Pelosi, Schumer. So I'm going to show you a bit of that uh, now in this clip. But the Republicans can actually make it illegal in count. The um, doorknobs are going to use this for... To, um, be, to push more people to vote for Republicans over Democrats. Which, by the way, he has pointed out to Anna. California, New York, everywhere else. And she and had a meltdown at him. Do you really yeah. think they won't? Do you think they'll care about the parliamentarian? Do you think they'll care about the arcane <laughs> Senate rules? No. Oh, here's what McConnell's going to say on day one. Oh, the Democrats threatened it, so it's good enough. We'll now execute it. It's their fault. Because McConnell, unlike these Garbage Democrats understands like, power and like, he wields it. Like, he wields it. He wields it for evil. He does it to control. He does it to force his theo his theocratic ideology onto all of us. That's what he uses it for. Whereas the Democrats, Nancy, hey Nancy, how's your refrigerator doing? How's your luxury ice cream doing? Okay, How, how's all that going for you? No, no, I, the Democrats, listen. All of the bootlickers for the Democratic Party get so upset at. I mean, Anna, you you and TYT kind of are one of them, so it's kind of funny yeah. that you. That's kind of funny how you yeah. go after bootlickers when you guys kind of are one of them. Me yeah. for telling the yeah. truth yeah. about how you to TYT have kind of considered considered to some degree corporate Democrats. Ineffective and pathetic Democratic lawmakers are. Go ahead and cry about it. Oh. But actual prediction from you, from you, from you, Anna and Jane. Yeah, because you guys cried about people that didn't want to vote for him, even when they're in blue states. Like, fine enough, you guys. Oh man, yeah. the shit I got. Oh man, the shit I got from people on TYT and leftists because I refused to vote for Hillary or Biden, and how it's my fault single-handedly. <laughs> oh, but the real enemies are the Republicans. Okay, At least Republicans. Um, yeah, you partly, you partially disagree. As I've said, um, the only time. In close races where you could go blue no matter who is in swing states. So Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, um, but the big four. Uh, they could possibly also add um, um, Arizona Georgia, and Georgia and maybe Florida. Yeah, Florida's always purple. They, they swing every time. Yeah. But, but of course, I'm a Nazi because I wouldn't vote for Hillary or Biden in a deep blue state. <laughs> the Nazis and we are. Republicans tell us exactly. Like the sexual progressives. I have. Feckless because Democrats of TYT in the squad. Because unlike you guys, we have convictions. Well, like a close to the Nazis. It's not the dirt knobs. Door knobs are close to the Nazis as well. Oh, we're the most progressive. They're about the far, true progressives are about the farthest away from Nazis that it seems to be possible to be. But you, any swing any way towards the TYT idiots, um, we swing towards Nazis, and we swing more towards the Dobbs. We swing towards Nazis. But you're helping Trump by not voting even in deep blue states, don't you know? You're the idiots that have been Trump <laughs> Being stupid, feckless, corporate dumbasses. Who they are. Yeah. They don't even hide their cards. They tell us exactly who they are and what they're planning on doing. They they scream they it from the mountaintops. Yeah. And what do Democrats do? Do they do anything to prepare for it, to strategize, to ensure that they mitigate the damage that's done by right-wingers in this country? No, they're too busy fundraising. Nancy? Because let's be honest, just like Republicans, Democrats... Both sides, they want to lose. They don't want to be in power because when they're not in power, that's when they make the most money from fundraising and shitting on yeah. whoever's in power. Just like when it's Trump... Just, it's just whoever is more successful at losing. 
Yeah. It actually loses. Pelosi's got a fundraise. Chuck Schumer, she, he can't do away with the filibuster because that would mean that he'd have to apply a little bit of pressure on goons like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. Ooh, can't do that. Can't do that. No, the reason why I go after Democrats is because A, they deserve it, and B, they deceive us. They lie to us and they tell us that they're gonna fight for us and they do the exact opposite. They fold immediately. Nancy Pelosi on the record said, we need strong Republicans. Oh, I bet I bet you do, Nancy. I bet you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah they need strong theocrats and Nazis. And Anna to sing do- cunts and blow up and blow the blow America into the stratosphere. And Anna, don't deny it. I wouldn't And Anna, don't deny it. I'm sure deep down you would probably vote for Pelosi if given the opportunity. I really do think you would. And your criticism would be completely hypocritical. And also, since you... And Honestly, ironically, CMIT and Jimmy Dwyer are as bad as each other. Oh, they would be so triggered. And then Vox would be wildly triggered. Vox is as bad as Dwyer as well. Oh, and that also reminds me, because this is something I forgot to mention about Roe v. Wade too. Because oh my God, on Twitter and YouTube and all them, the new—I mean, once again, I'm being accused since I wouldn't vote, since me and my fellow Bernie Bros wouldn't support Hillary in 2016. Therefore, it's our fault that Trump got the Supreme Court. Well, Republicans got the Supreme Court. We're in this position. How many times do we have to tell you? Literally, got rid of all Supreme Court justices. Waited until they got in, and then gone zero nine for theocratic Nazis, and completely ripped up the Constitution and made it illegal to be a Democrat. Guys, how, I'm going to explain this once again. Even if Hillary did win, the Republicans still had the House and Senate for her first two years. And just like with Obama, the last nine months of his term when he tried to put a Supreme Court nominee in, they were going to block her for all that time. And then, of course, in 2018, instead of the Democrats winning because Trump was an idiot, the Republicans would gain even more seats because Hillary would be so bad. So no matter what, the Republicans were going to block all of her appointments in her four years. And then she probably would have lost in 2020. So, yeah. no, it's not our fault that she that the Supreme Court yeah, this way. It was going to happen no matter what. Yeah. And you need to go, oh, okay. Do dumb fuck corporatist praises to is that fault. You're projecting because you're, because you're the pieces of shit it, who gave us power. And you were going to destroy America. It, in cahoots with the Republicans. And That's also, you all need to get lost forever. And also, if you really want to blame anyone for this, you should blame all the Democrats and all the idiot voters that vote for Hillary and Biden in the primaries instead of Bernie. Because Bernie would have yeah. won, would have yeah, destroyed Trump. Why America's going to be 50 to 100 years. Bernie would have won. He would have gotten a huge lead in House and Senate. And then we would be able to put any um, court nominee we want, no matter what the Republicans say. But, of course, you have to be progressive. You have to go up against your corporate overlords, which you will never do. Without the strong Republicans, how would you fundraise? You pathetic, pathetic corporate goon. Now, while I was watching this, I was uh, reminded, I I reminded myself of this uh, little uh, gif here. No lies detected. (laughs) No lies detected. Just a fantastic, passionate rebuke of both of these parties. They're more particularly the, the Democratic Party because of just their complete failure. In here, before, fa- in here before Vox cries to Anna about, you're making Democrats sound worse than Republicans. <laughs> They're not even trying. I mean, failure <laughs> assumes you're actually <laughs> trying. They're not even, mirror of door. even trying to do anything about this. <laughs> They're just trying to find it. You remember the like six months. Oh, you remember the, um, I, I'm going to say it right now. Bush and Dora are literally skating off each other at this point. Yep. Dora and Bum, oh, what's his face? Um, Grey Zone guy. Blumenthal. Yeah, Dora and Blumenthal and Bush are literally at the moment sitting off each other. Yep. <laughs> Just like remember when he mid, he only was against force to vote because Dora was for it? Yep. All the yeah. times that both of them walked away and then walked back to Medicare for all based on who the other uh, supported or opposed it. 
Yep. It's a Bush and Gore did. Really is yep. just absolutely disgusting how weak this party is. Now, there are members, of course, within the party trying to do more, but they couldn't even be bothered to endorse Nina Turner, who would help to add to their numbers. The, the main issue mm -hmm. now with, you know, so-called squad or progressives, the actual progressives in Congress, well, they actually wanted to want to see, you know, Medicare for all. And I do believe they want those issues. But if they're not going to use their power to fight for them by growing their numbers, that's how they would do it. They need to grow their numbers. And to grow your numbers, you have to support people that are challenging sitting members like Nina Turner, challenging Chantal Brown. If you're not going to endorse those fighters trying to challenge those sitting members who do not support your issues, then how do you expect to win on those issues? You don't have the numbers. So, yeah. A lot of blame here to go around, obviously. You know, no pretending here. Of course, this is a an issue that is exists because of the Republican Party. We understand that. But when your so-called opposition party is doing nothing at all to actually be the opposition, they deserve just as much criticism as the GOP do. In here before Voss cries about that. And also, speaking of Nina, after she lost in her concession speech, she implied she might actually consider running in 2024 for president. Which, oh. if she does, that would be awesome. That would be that so thing. based. That if Bernie don't run, Nina would be the next best thing. So please, if that's the case, oh. Nina, please run. And of course, oh, oh, I can't wait to see corporate Democrats excuse of why we can't. We, well, I can't wait to see them use id poll against her. Even though we could say, hey, if she wins, we have the first black woman to be president, and watch them swarm about. They can't have that for a reason. <laughs> So yeah, that was an awesome speech by Anna, but yeah, a lot of the things you said, Anna, do apply right back to you, so it's kind of hypocritical at the same time, but it was still a good speech. Now, I mean, it's accurate about the but it's still projection. Now, let's go watch Greg Gutfeld make a fool of himself as he got into a huge fight on Fox and Friends with, Ger with Gerardo Riviera. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Of course, this is about Roe v. Wade as well. Yeah. So, of course, um, Greg Gutfeld is an idiot on Fox News. Gerardo Rivera, he is a journalist on Fox News. Like, he is... Remember when we covered, like, Chris Wallace weeks ago when he retired from Fox News? Geraldo is, like... I mentioned, like, Shem Smith being, like, one of the very few somewhat, not really, but still somewhat respectable people on Fox. Geraldo Riviera is also one of those people, too. And he might be, like, the only one left. But he's still a piece of shit in other ways. But he's, like, the only one who has, like, even just a wheel... Like, a grain of sensibility to him. Well... He got on the five when they're talking about Roe v. Wade being overruled, and oh boy, he and Gutfeld had a meltdown, and it was so funny because Gutfeld made a fool of himself as always. <laughs> Let's watch oh, Kyle make a fool of him too. All right, guys. So Geraldo Rivera and Greg Gutfeld threw down on the issue of abortion. Um, it got really tense at the end. So let me play this for you. There's a bunch of fluff in the middle from the other hosts, but I'll just show you. The relevant parts you got Geraldo uh, talks about the Roe versus Wade decision from the Supreme Court, and then Gutfeld tries to fire back at the end of it. Let's take a look. I think that first of all, Republicans make a mistake when they emphasize the crime of uh, of the leak itself over the the impact of what the decision would entail. True, that's just a be. Yeah, this yeah. even if Republicans do get what they want, this will be a. Huge blow for him, too. This will help Democrats win in 2020 or 2022, hopefully enough to prevent the Republicans from gaining any seats. Democrats take over more so we can pressure progressives and buying to do things. Now, I don't think it's going to be enough, but it will help. So that was a very bad blow for Republicans in that regard. Geraldo is true in that regard. Yes, Dodge from the conservatives who don't want to grapple with the fact that they're... Oh, yeah. And what Kyle said, and Rivera says true, too. Republicans know it. This is bad for him. That's why they're talking about the leak instead. The position on this is really unpopular. So they're trying to obfuscate and deflect and change the conversation to something where they feel like they can gin up some fake outrage. 
for the women. And I think that emotion, however you think of those particular personalities, that is that is legit. This is uh, uh, more problematic, I think. And Judge, I think you'd agree with me. What this shows, because it goes both ways, what this shows is that the Senate confirmation process by which a, a nominee is interrogated by both parties and give, give their reasons why they are fit to be on the high court is absolutely deeply flawed. Why? Because these nominees lie. Which, by the way, is one of the reasons... That was one of the things for, like, Kavanaugh and Amy Comey Barrett. One of the big things about them getting the um, nominee was about Roe v. Wade. And, of course, they were acting yeah. like... Well, Kyle pointed out they technically didn't lie because they never said they were not going to overrule Roe v. Wade. They were doing, like, the standard questions, like, get away with it, and so they get nominated and all that. And, of course, yeah. I can't remember what stupid Republican senator woman in the North... East, somewhere up in Maine or whatever, I can't remember her name, was like, Ugh, I trust them that they're not going to do this. I'll vote for them. Oh, shit, they did. Stupid bitch. Whoa. They go before the Senate of the United States. They always lie, guys. Never believe a word they say. States. Yep. They uh, they swear that they're going to be judicious and good, uh, uh, you know, shepherds of the, of the court and its uh, impartiality and uh, the importance it, uh, it uh, has in American society. And that the stare decisis, that the precedent of these cases, well established, 30 years, 40 years, 49 years, that that is uh, something that the Supreme Court honors. And then they turn around the minute they get in the high court, they make a decision that is so dramatically opposed to what they said during the confirmation hearings. Shame on them. Shame on Gorsuch, shame on Coney Barrett, shame on Kavanaugh. They knew when they were swearing to those senators or in the conversations in the Senate offices that they were going to vote to reverse or overthrow Roe v. Wade. They knew it and they lied about it. And I, I don't know. So, yeah, what he's referring to here is during their hearings to determine whether or not they're going to be on the Supreme Court, their confirmation hearings, uh, Gorsuch, Amy Coney Barrett and Kavanaugh all said things that were relatively conclusive about Roe versus Wade, where they said, yeah, it's the precedent, um, it's stare decisis, it's the law of the land, um, it's settled law, and they were, you know, they, it, you could argue, like, on a technicality that perhaps they didn't lie because they're just restating the fact that it is the current law of the land, but they certainly left the taste in everybody's mouth that, you know, they take precedent seriously, and um, it basically it, it shouldn't be overruled. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, and you guys aren't going to be surprised to hear this, but when you have these hearings for somebody to become a Supreme Court justice, they lie. Because they all have the same standard answers that they go to about, like, my job is not to be political. My job is to just interpret the law as written and uphold the Constitution. And the fact... Guys, the Supreme Court is political. There's no way around it. It's just a stupid bullshit excuse they make. And that's why we have to make it where no conservatives are ever allowed in the court ever again. The fact of the matter is, everything is political by definition. And your biases are going to inform how you interpret the Constitution. And so, if people were being honest, they would just go in front of the court and give their actual political opinions which would influence their judicial opinions, but they don't do that. And so we have this, like, BS kabuki theater that goes on where lying is expected. And the, the only thing that's more annoying than Gorsuch and Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett lying is that you have a bunch of, like, sucker senators who, who were, are genuinely shocked and chagrined that there's gambling going on at this establishment. Like, they were like, oh, they lied to us. And it's like, well, yeah, of, of course they fucking lied to you. Of course they lied to you. I don't know how you fix that? I don't know how you can repair when the the most sacred office in the land, the High Court of the United States, is peopled by politicians. You know, if I was accused, that's correct. So just understand that it, literally everything is political. When people try to act like we're above politics, that is not possible. Court decisions are inherently political. So it's just a total BS dodge. Anyway, so now let's jump ahead to Gutfeld because he sort of 
goes in after um, Geraldo, and then Geraldo snaps. Let's take a look. Stay the break. But this is why pro-lifers win, because they can state their case so plainly. Yeah. You ask somebody why they're pro-life, they will say, because abortion takes a life, and we believe life is sacred. You can disagree with that. But you can't disagree with the simplicity of it, right? But the problem with the pro-choicers is that they don't have the balls to state their case plainly. Just uh, how about this then, Gutfeld? It's a woman's body. It's her choice. End yeah. of discussion. Right there, there. That's even more simpler than what you said. So eat shit. Say. I think that's bullshit. Of course, I think it's that's bullshit. bullshit. All the language around being pro-choice, around being pro-abortion, is about freedom and bodily autonomy. So, so now, look, look, I will grant him that it is true that among the base on the right that is pro-life, they also have a simple argument. They say, hey, you know, as soon as uh, the sperm meets the egg, there's a third person in the room. So, like, there's a life that's been created, even though, granted, it's primitive and very early on, it is still a life. Therefore, they think it has a soul. There are a lot of, like, religious implications to it. But... It is, a, it is a simple notion. We'll just draw a clean line and say, you know, from second number one, it counts as a life because it has a soul. So it, that is simple, but he's being disingenuous when he says that the argument on the pro-choice side isn't straightforward. Of course it's straightforward. Now, I would love it if we actually could get into the nuances and complexities of the conversation and, like, the pro-choice people didn't straw man the pro-life people and the pro-life people didn't straw man the pro-choice people but Greg, Greg Gutfeld, Gutfeld is doing exactly that here in pretending that, you know, well, they don't even have a simple argument. Well, of course they do. Like, I prefer freedom over fetuses. Don't sit here and come up with all of these other things like it's going to be interracial marriage next. My body, my choice. How much simpler? Okay. Yeah, because that was the, argu the argument that the, the court used in this league to overrule, overrule Roe v. Wade very easily can apply to those things. So, yeah. It is possible. Will it? I don't know, but it can be. Yeah. Greg Gutfeld is an idiot. And the fact that it can be is enough of a concern. The reason why people are saying, hey, maybe it's going to be interracial marriage next, is because the logic espoused in the opinion, the majority opinion of the court to overturn Roe, is the same logic that could be used to overturn interracial marriage. Now, I don't know if it'll go as far as overturning interracial marriage. But well, I think I it is likely they would overturn gay marriage because gay marriage we got yeah, relatively recently. recently. You know, interracial marriage has uh, somewhat recently, but it's been, you know, decades and decades. And I don't know. That, I mean, that would be a bridge too far probably even for the Supreme Court. But if they apply the same logic that they're applying in row, yeah, you could ax gay marriage, interracial marriage, sodomy laws, physician assistance. Honestly, the amount of back like for all the backlash they're getting, guys, about abortion, even though it's like 70, 80 percent approval, abortion on of, compared to all these other things, it has lower approval than the other things. So if they're facing this much backlash for abortion, you know when they go for like gay marriage, all that they're gonna face even worse of a backlash. Like it would be so bad, like if they if this like happen more like towards the end of the year, this could probably easily swing like an entire election. Like that's how much of a backlash it would be. Oh. Suicide. Suicide. Because, because, you know, you know the, the argument, argument was, was this, this is, is not, not, these aren't rights, rights that are deep rooted in our history. history. That was that's the argument. argument. So in other words, they're, they're saying, saying like, like, well, the, the Supreme, Supreme Court, Court is reading, reading too much into the Constitution and not taking it literally and doing a modern interpretation of the language. And it's under that modern interpretation of the language of, like, equal protection under the law that we've decided gay people have a right to get married. But the founders didn't intend that. And also the founders didn't intend for gay people to get married because they didn't have gay marriage at the time. Nobody thought about it. Nobody could ever imagine it at the time. So if you're being an originalist and you're saying it's whatever the founders intended, well, then guess what? The founders didn't intend gay marriage. They didn't intend interracial marriage. You know, they didn't intend to have legalized sodomy or whatever. So it's the, it, by the exact same logic that they're using to overturn Roe, they could use that logic to overturn interracial marriage, gay marriage. Um, they bring back sodomy laws, et cetera, et cetera. So 
I don't know. He's, he's being really disingenuous by acting like, oh, this is a crazy thing that people are saying is going to happen. It's the same logic that they applied in this case, applied to other cases historically. Can you get Let me finish. You already did your uh, ad hominem. Um, people, the, the, we, were talk, hominem we were talking about. Now, now I don't know about you guys. It didn't strike me that um, Geraldo Rivera's take was particularly vociferous. Or vitriolic. It's just Gutfeld is just COVID. Meanwhile, Greg Gutfeld is like straw manning everybody who's pro choice. And he's telling Geraldo, like, you already had your chance to do your ad hominem. This, yeah, you, you, you insulted a few people there. Um, we talked about this. People are more concerned about what they lose than what they will gain. Because you don't have to imagine loss. All you got to do is talk to somebody who lost a child. But you can't, you, it's, it, 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 you don't have to imagine it. And it's there forever. A pro-choice mom can look at her adorable two-year-old and think my life would be nothing without her in 2022. In 2017, when she was young and single and didn't have a kid, she could only imagine the loss of her freedom, right? That sounds pretty creepily misogynistic there, gut felt. Wait. You don't, you can't imagine women don't, I mean, you do know there are women who don't want kids or don't want kids at the moment, right? So, that doesn't, just because, well, Kyle's going to point out so there's no reason really to say. So, so that's the issue. The issue here is that. That's, that's a really, really dumb, dumb argument. What, what's, what's the, the point, point here? The, the point, point is that, that like, like, every woman in all circumstances across the board will fundamentally want to have the baby at some point. Is that the argument? Hey, there are some women who maybe at one point were pro-choice, but now are pro-life or had a kid, and so they can't imagine aborting. And so their opinion is the only opinion that matters? I mean, it's just, like, it, it's... It's, it's not, not even anecdotal. anecdotal. It doesn't even hit the bar of anecdotal. It's, it's like, like below anecdotal. anecdotal. People need to imagine, right? They can't step back and see how pro-choice arguments are driven by refusal to imagine what that baby could be. And your guys are doing the exact same thing when you force women to not be able to have abortions, even in case of, like, rape and incest. What if they don't want it? What if they could die from it? Because childbirth is actually a very dangerous thing for women. Women do die from it. In fact, I, actually, I think I actually looked this up recently. I think worldwide, I think up to, like, 200,000 women die a year because of childbirth or some crazy number. That's like, insane. it's a very dangerous thing. And you know what could save them, maybe? An abortion is a possibility. Yeah. So you're going to take that yeah. away from them. And also, what if they just don't want the kid? How about that? You oh, can... But you can just adopt it out and put it in foster care. Yeah. Kid. Force women to carry something they don't want. Yeah. And then, of course, oh, just don't have sex. Uh, people want to have sex all the time. We're hardwired to do it. And then, ugh, just use contraceptive. Well, I mean, contraceptive yeah. doesn't work all the time. And also, you guys don't want people to have contraceptives. But you guys have your way of contraception as well. Yep. But Greg, and, and you know what? Let me pull up some statistics on this for you. Just so you understand, although most, most abortions, most take place early in the pregnancy, 11% of women obtain an abortion... Uh, 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 excuse me, 11% of women who obtain an abortion do so after the first trimester, at 13 weeks after the last menstrual period or later. Okay, so this means 89% of abortions happen before 13 weeks. Yep. 89%. 13 weeks is very, very early. So you're talking about... And of course, a lot of these states have it banned to like Six weeks, you can't have it after six weeks. A lot of women don't know they're pregnant at that time. I'm not even, I'm not even kidding you. There are actually studies that are on the books. They can't force it at the moment, but with an abortion, the third between the women's right and bring it in, that have it at zero weeks or even before. Yeah, like women, not all women are going to know they're pregnant that quickly. It usually takes up to a month before they know they're pregnant because that's usually the first sign that they know there's something like a pregnancy is possible because they don't have their period before viability but of course conservatives understand women's biology impossible we know that 
It's a pre-gestation fetus. There's no nervous system, so there's no, there's no pain. pain. They, they try, try to, to like, they, every, all, all their commentary, commentary stems, stems from, from this, this idea, idea, this notion, notion that, that like, you're, you're always just killing a baby, full stop. This, this is obviously something that's way more complex than that. And there's so many more layers of nuance to it. And they refuse to engage honestly with the issue. And then, by the way, look at this. Slightly more than 1% of abortions are performed at 21 weeks or later. That's even a more impressive stance than the stuff we cover. Remember, we always covered, like, 90% of abortions are done before, like, age of viability. Like, the first trimester is over. And in all late abortions, only 90, I mean, like, 90 plus percent of them are usually because of fatal fetal defect, life or mother, stuff like that. This says only 1% of abortions are done after 21 weeks. That's not even, I don't even think that's even late term. I think that's second trimester still. Yeah. So yeah, I'm less than what? Weeks. Just slightly more than 1% of abortions are late term, you fucking whiny baby. Slightly, slightly more. more. Uh, okay. okay. So, so that's, that's, let's say it's 2%, 2% right? right? 98%, 98 of abortions are before 21 weeks. 98%. Because... We talked about before, to me it comes down to like this belief that conservatives have where they think like women just get an abortion because they just want to. Like, no. like e even late term abortions, they think like women just want, like use it as like a birth control. I'm sure you've seen that stereotype, remember? Yeah. Guys, um, most women that, the first, like the most abortions that are like in the first term, those are the women that don't want it. A rape, an accident or stuff like that. The women that get abortions later I guarantee you almost all those abortions are because of life of the mother or fatal field defect or something like that. The women who don't want the kid will get an abortion as soon as they can. The women that get late-term abortions, they do want them, but something happens that causes them to have to get it usually. Yeah. So, so this, this notion, notion of like, like oh, it's late, a lot of late-term is going on or the, the implication that all these abortions are late-term. Term. It's, it's not true. true. There's even an abortion pill. pill. I don't, I don't know, know if you guys, guys know that, that, that you, you take, take early on. on. And it's, it's not the morning after pill. There's actually a... That's plan B, which conservatives are also against. Abortion pills. And, and it's for very early on. on. Like, like, their the entire, entire argument, argument is built, built on this, this facade that... An incorrect you're dealing one, as with, always. Yep. Yep. A, you yep. know, yep. babies a, a day before they come out of the womb. When in reality, in many instances, we're talking about gametes <laughs> and and also like oh that's that's another stupid argument that ugh, p um democrats are now allowing post-birth abortion or stuff like that if you heard about that first off oh, that no. wouldn't be an abortion that would be a murder because they would be born and also yeah they're trying, to, they're trying literally trying to get people like um abortion providers murdered like george C. and also i don't even think an abortion's even possible that late into a pregnancy have you ever heard of anything no. that late? I think at that point, at that point they're just, um, just birth the kid at that point and offer them up for adoption. Yeah. And zygotes. Oh. You know? So, so it, it's, it's just, just engage right, honestly with this. Engage right, honestly with this. Yeah. Latest abortion. Bees. Then suddenly it changes, right? And then they have to create reasons. They have to create all these reasons to be pro-choice. Rather than just be honest. The reason... Uh, we are being honest, Gugfeld. You just don't like our reasoning. It's a woman's body, her choice, and discussion. There you go. Is The reason is, before a certain line in the pregnancy, you are not dealing with a baby. You're not. It hasn't developed to that point yet. You're, you're not even dealing with a developed fetus. You're dealing with gametes and zygotes and pregestation fetuses and pre-viability fetuses and no nervous system is developed yet. Now, you can swat aside all that nuance and say, no, it, it, you know, it, life starts at conception. But if we're keeping it real here, it is a pile of goo at that point. It has not developed yet. So, again, war on nuance is what's required to make these arguments. And honestly, at the root of it, in many instances, is just a religious fundamentalism. Now, Gutfeld is not religious. So I don't know why he's carrying water for this notion. Because he's stupid. But it's a, it's a fundamentally religious idea 
that the life starts. Good God, he has like the most angriest face right now. It's so funny. <laughs> parts of conception, and the idea is a, a soul exists at conception, and that you know, there's no reason to believe that. <laughs> so, the people who are making a pro-choice argument. It, it, it is a freedom argument. It's a, you know, my body, my choice type argument. And it's about, you can't force me to be an incubator. Now, listen, I'm a little different from most lefties on this issue. Or actually, I don't know if that's fair to say. I, maybe I have the majority position. I don't know. Um, but I do think there's a reasonable conversation to be had later on. See, this is why I think Roe versus Wade got it right. Because Roe versus Wade doesn't say... You can get abortion at any time, no questions asked, it's fully unregulated. No, it's actually very nuanced in how they approach it. They set up the trimester standard later on in the Yeah, guys, Roe v. Wade's like very moderate for crying out loud. You act like this is like some far left thing. No, it's really just moderate. In fact, a lot of states that even do have abortions right now, even like um, blue states, they actually a lot of times do restrict abortion after a little bit, to, unless it's like a fatal field defect, life and mother or something like that. Like, it's it's rare to even find a state that would even allow you to do it whenever you want, for crying out loud. 1992, the Supreme Court changed that to the viability standard. But the idea is, early on in the pregnancy, the government has no say, it's your privacy, it's your choice. Uh, then after a certain point in, like, the mid-portion of the pregnancy, states are allowed to implement um, some health regulations, some guidelines, to say, hey, this is allowed, but this is, is not allowed, etc. And then later on in the pregnancy... Um, if states want, they could just ban late-term abortion because late-term abortion is fundamentally different by its nature because you are dealing with perhaps, uh, you know, something that could be a baby in a week. And there's a, like a different moral and ethical standard to bring to bear when you're at that point versus when you're early on in the pregnancy. So I actually consider myself a moderate on this issue. But again, he's not having a nuanced conversation. He's, it, it's, a, it's a war on... It, and right now, I actually looked it up online. The latest abortion I've seen done on this one article, somewhere in Colorado, some woman had one when it was like 32 weeks. And guess what? Why? And guess why? Uh, let me guess. The fatal defect in the fetus. Yes. It had no lungs. Ah. So, yeah. Like I said. The latest abortion I found, like 32 weeks, I think the average pregnancy is like 38 weeks, so that's really up there. But it wasn't because she didn't want it, it was because the fetus was pretty much dead. It, it's strawmanning the position of people who are pro-choice and pretending like, Why would anybody believe this, bro? And say, yeah, it kills an unborn kid, but I prefer my freedom. That's all you gotta say, you get so much more. Look at that, now I just showed you how 98% of abortions are not late-term abortions. And 89% happen before 13 weeks, which is super early. And he's like, are you killing an unborn kid, bro? <laughs> to he's totally it really just comes down to a philosophical um, view of when does life begin and sorry I don't share your same standards of when life begins so you can go cry more Guthel. unfamiliar with the statistics on this or he's lying or he knows the statistics and he's lying respect the other thing that or he's just stupid which we all know Gutfeld is stupid it drives me crazy now that I'm on my soapbox is it used to be even the pro-choicers would admit that abortion was an ugly thing, but they felt it had to be a necessary evil, uh, something that would be safe and rare. That was the argument. You yeah, that's how it still is now. That's If you care so much about abortion, how about, um, oh, I don't know, make contraceptive legal and also easy access, sex education, all that, because guess what? When you do all that, abortion rates go down. That's why... Yeah. That's why liberal states like mine have lower abortion rates compared to conservative states. You always heard. Yeah. But now, when you go anywhere on social media, it's something to celebrate, to cherish, right? The unfortunate. To shout. Oh, yes. the, 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 no, well, yes. yes. Baloney. Let, I, so, Gutfeld actually is half right here. There, there was sort of a movement starting a few years ago to flip it from... The old argument used to be abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. That still is the argument. And everybody sort of agreed to that, even people who were pro-choice. Then it got to the point where there was this, like, loud minority fringe contingent of leftists who sort of took pride in the fact that they got an abortion and did the whole, like, shout my abortion thing. Yeah, I remember that. And so he's not wrong that that, that uh, faction exists. 
And honestly, I would sort of agree that that faction is kind of idiotic, right? But who really it definitely, cares? by no stretch of the imagination, is the majority of people who are pro-choice. Yeah, they're not even In fact, close I showed to you guys majority, so who cares? And the most popular opinion If they want to the be proud about their abortion, go ahead, I don't care. Say, quote, abortion should be legal in certain circumstances. Then it was 32% that it said it should be legal in all circumstances. And then it was only 19% that said it should be illegal in all circumstances. So the overwhelming majority position in the country is basically the Roe position, which is legal in certain circumstances. Like, like as we covered earlier, like it was like 40, it's 48% of Americans think abortion should be legal in some cases. 32% think it should be legal in all cases. And only 19% think it should be illegal in all cases. So add it all up, that's like... 80% support abortion in some regards. Yeah. Regulated, regulated, but legal. legal. There's, There's a certain, certain line where the government, government needs to butt out. out. A certain line where they could regulate it. A certain, certain line where they could ban it if they so choose. I can, I'll give you evidence. The, the wire hanger, hanger stuck, stuck up their, their private stuff uh-huh. trying to get it. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing, oh. too. Because, guys, even all you conservatives watching are pro-lifers, even if you did ban, I mean, I'm get rid of Roe v. Wade and did ban abortion. Hell, even go all the way and ban across the country. It's not going to mm-hmm. go away. Abortion is going to exist no, no matter no, what. No, no, no. It's just going to be less safe and women are going to die because of it. Whereas the abortion is going to happen no matter what. So you want women to die with a clothes hanger abortion? Or would you rather them go to a clinic where it can be safely done? Where they don't die? And that's why mm-hmm. And that's why deep down I think a lot of it is it's not really about the sanctity of life. You just want to control women. And from what I've seen over the years, you have pretty much confirmed that. What? The, what? Come on. Uh, the unborn what? child. On. That's the unborn the child becomes. Being before Rose. This is exactly what I expected. Ah, yeah. the, 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 bring out the old girl. You're arrogant. arrogant. Go, 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 go for it. it. Geraldo, come, come on, keep going. Okay, Joe, make it a fool on this, on this. No, no, don't you give him something like you're something punk. Okay. Oh, what? Am I your new Bongino? Godfather, you're the idiot here. All right, hey, listen. Okay. First of all, I don't know who this schmuck is here at the end. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not a big Geraldo fan, um, but Gutfeld is just insufferable. Like, he's got this smug arrogance and certitude about himself, but his entire persona is built on, like, just relentlessly strawmanning people who disagree with him. So, I find that pathetic. I find it annoying. Um, he's refusing to even acknowledge that the pro-choice people have a point in some respects. Because they don't agree and with us. Simple as that. It's like we dismiss them because so, we think they're crazy. Anyway, anyway there you have it. Gutfeld <laughs> and, and Geraldo right. going at it. Geraldo. So, what do you guys say about Gutfeld making a fool of himself as always? <laughs> of course, it's no surprise that Gutfeld would do that. He needs to keep coping and seething and being wrong about everything. And Geraldo called him an insulted punk, too. <laughs> Good one. Geraldo, that's still kind of weak, but I guess since you're on TV and a really prudish Fox Network. I guess that's the best you can get. Even even a lot of the mm-hmm. lines would probably be that's too harsh for them. But yeah, oh, cry more conservatives. Mm-hmm. Don't overrule, I mean, overthrow Roe v. Wade. It's needed. Mm-hmm. It's a woman's body. It's her choice. Deal with it. And now we finally, finally gone through all the topics related to Roe v. Wade. Now we can finally talk about some other things. Ooh, we saw um, Gutfeld make a fool of himself. How about we see Lindsey Graham make a fool of himself now? And this time, over unions. Because, remember the last few weeks we've had victory after victory after victory about um, unions both at Amazon, Starbucks, and Verizon? Well, recently, Christian Smalls, the organizer of that um, Staten Island um, Amazon union yeah, that successfully uh, happened, he went, to con- he, went to, he went to Congress recently for a congressional hearing. And, oh boy, Lindsey Graham... Made a fool of himself. Oh boy, this is gonna be funny. The The most most radical radical agenda agenda in my my lifetime lifetime. is not a Democrat or a Republican thing. It's a workers thing. Amazon labor union president Christian Smalls kindly shut down Lindsey Graham's garbage during a hearing on Amazon's labor practices. Now, I have a couple of clips to show you, so the second clip is gonna get a little more into what Amazon has been doing to these workers. But But first first here, here, this exchange. exchange. So, So, Lindsey Lindsey Graham Graham was was, uh, uh, annoyed annoyed that that they had, that they even had this (laughs) this discussion about about Amazon's Amazon's labor practices. practices. So So you're you're gonna gonna see see that and you're gonna see Christian Christian Smalls' response. This is very dangerous. 
You can have oversight hearings all you like, but you've determined Amazon is a piece of crap company. That's your political bias. They're subject to the laws of the United States. They shouldn't be. No, they get away with it by paying you guys off, you fucking lying If we get the committee back, we're not going to do this. I'm here to say that if you're a business, you can have a say too about your workforce. No, the you idea don't. that you can you only get a government contract, contract if you promise to be neutral is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous, this is a Graham. Approach, the most the radical agenda in my lifetime. What in unions is radical? At the ballot box, and it will be. Your existence is radical, extreme, and stupid, though. You know what's funny? I almost want to say that they're going to make an excuse in the future that unions are woke bullshit, but guess what? They actually already did that. <laughs> now unions are woke. On how or what they're gonna try to work us. Well, first, first of all, I want to address Mr. Graham. Graham. Um, first, first of all, all, you know, you're. It sounds like you was talking about more of the companies and the businesses in your speech, but you forgot that the people are the ones who make this. These companies operate, and if we're not protected, and if the process for when we hold these companies accountable is not working for us, then that's not what, that's the reason why we're here today. That's the reason why I'm here to represent the workers who make these companies go. And I think that it's in your best interest to realize that it's not a, a left or right thing. It's not a Democrat or a Republican thing. It's a workers thing. It's a workers issue. But he doesn't care about workers. All he cares about is being corrupt. The corporations that you're talking about, and the businesses that you're talking about, and the warehouses that you're talking about. So that's the reason why I think I was invited today to speak on that behalf. And you should listen because we do represent your constituents as well. Um, so just take that into consideration that the people are the ones that make these corporations go. It's not the, it's not the other way around. Cut. All right, so I have a second clip coming up, but uh, first here. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham and his righteous indignation. Oh, Amazon. Amazon doesn't deserve this. Uh, they they yes, shouldn't be subjected they do. to this. Come on. This is a company whose profits soared 220% during the pandemic. Yep, literally, literally a multi trillionaire. And all that 220% increase in profit they got during um, COVID should be taxed to 100%. <laughs> yes. And use that, hell, all that money, hell, all that money, that could fund maybe universal health care in the country. <laughs> what a lovely thing that would be. Meanwhile, places like where Christian Smalls uh, worked, COVID outbreaks, no real protections in place for workers until they complained. People getting sick, overworked, underpaid, while Amazon corporate enjoys their massive profits. While Bezos is out on his, you know, several yachts going to space, these people actually doing the work, actually the ones generating the profits for Amazon. But no, Lindsey Graham, businesses should also have their say. Are you kidding? What? That's all that's been going on. Yeah. The the corporations have always had their say for like the last 50 plus yep. years. And they guess what? Have, now, it's, no voice. now it's our turn. And yes, they should have yeah. no voice whatsoever. They should be taxed to whatever need. And they can go cry more if they don't like it. Get taxed, get, get taxed, get you in your face, and get wrecked. The only yeah. ones that have their say are the businesses, are the corporations. Finally, workers. And by the way. The tax increase, the unionization, all those things are actually funny enough pro-capitalism, which means you would benefit from it. ...get a voice in this one hour-long hearing, and it's it's too much for Lindsey Graham. He can't take it. Absolutely Ooh, ridiculous. And by the way, look at who the, the child is in the room there. Yes. Christian Smalls calmly, you know, shuts down Lindsey Graham's crap. crap. Lindsey Graham freaking out that there's any criticism at all about Amazon. Oh no! I wonder who he represents. Who do you think Lindsey Graham stands up for? 
The vast majority oh, of people, the working class... Oh, we gotta think about Bezos hurt feelings, remember? He's so sensitive. You know, it hurts to, to hear that maybe he'll have one less penny, remember? Class, or the ones at the top of society that already benefit completely. Yeah, he might be able to shove it up his ass. It's absolutely <laughs> well, that's amazing a special to me that kink anyone for him. can vote. You're gonna take away his kink? <laughs> for a dipshit like that. Now, before I get to the second clip, they also went to the White House. So White House hosted the organizer at Amazon and at a Starbucks. Christian Smalls tweeting out later on that's saying that he is currently at the White House. Now, who do you think organized that? <laughs> who do you think reached out to Christian Smalls, to Starbucks organizers? Joe Biden? Think it was Joe Biden? No, Joe Biden's Biden, who's two been trying dimension, to ignore this issue this entire time. Joe Biden, who has done nothing at all to actually fight to pass the PRO Act? No, of course not. It was Bernie. Now, I don't know that for sure, but... And actually, now that I think of it, I think I saw Mayumi tweet this earlier about um, Smalls actually said he met Biden. Let's see if I could find it again. Something about it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. This is what she tweet, retweeted from Smalls. Just met the president, LO. He said I got him in trouble. G good. Hashtag Amazon labor. Hmm, so maybe he met Biden, maybe he did some pressure in, perhaps? Oh, I think we know it was Bernie. Hopefully. He had just been recently talking to the Starbucks workers. He was there in Virginia. Of course, was out there with these Amazon um, organizers as well. So, yeah. Joe Biden talks a big game, but doesn't really go anywhere. Now, let me get to this second clip. So, actually, Bernie put this out on, um, on his page. And this is them discussing with the Amazon workers how Amazon has been treating these workers. The union busting is above and beyond. Yeah. We heard about the intimidations. We heard about the threats. Anyone that talks to us gets fired. Anyone that talks to us gets fired. We gotta get that down. Because that is threats. That's creating an environment of intimidation. Yeah, guys. You support a company that if you support a union, you should get fired for it? No. Yeah. Creating a retaliatory oh, oh, environment. We heard about the um, organizers to be killed. Remember, we actually covered it too when um the union when um Amazon started freak out. Remember, Kyle covered they had their own like app where they weren't allowed to say certain words and all that. Yeah, I remember that <laughs> about these anti-union meetings. Amazon doesn't realize that everybody is already traumatized by working there for ten hours, twelve hours on station. And when you divide workers and you're putting workers against each other, you're putting us in danger and to the point where, you know, we have to hire security now. Mm -hmm. And, and we, gotta, we gotta watch our back because workers really think, believe the stuff that they're hearing about us. They stop production for five hours per day to bring every single person, all 500 people on the shift, into this meeting where the general manager and the vice president of HR for all of Amazon comes and plead, begs people basically to vote no. Never in the history of Amazon have they ever stopped production to pull people <laughs> for an all hands on deck meeting. That is illegal, unacceptable. <laughs> And we're going to deal with that as well. So we need strong labor law, which at the end of the day says that if 50% of workers in a unit plus one vote for a union, you know what? They got a union and the company's going to have to negotiate that contract in a reasonable term. Yeah. So, of course, Bernie Sanders has had a long history, his entire career, fighting for unions well before he was in Congress, you know, before he was even a mayor. He was fighting for organizing for others, fighting for the working class, and again, he shows that there. But ultimately, look, this is, this shows you what Amazon was doing to try and, and is still doing, to try and suppress any discussion of a union, any attempt here for workers to have their own voice. They, for the first time ever, called an all hands on deck meeting, actually stopped production. I mean, think of what it takes for Amazon to decide, we're not gonna have profits for five hours today. This is what it takes. They're, because of how scared they are of workers having their own voice, because they understand what that leads to. That leads to them maybe having to pay a little more, maybe oh, having to improve horror. conditions somewhat, maybe cutting into a, just a tiny bit, a little <gasps> bit, cutting into the money cutting given to executives at the top of the That's company. That's worse than 
It's worse amazing. than anything that you can think of. This is why oh, no. this fight is so important and why that victory was so important. Because not only is it good for them, it's also good for everybody. It encourages, it, it, it then, it, it gives a incentive. It makes people realize that, hey, this is possible. If you can win a union vote at Amazon in a massive warehouse with tons of employees, then you can unionize anywhere. And ultimately, that's what that victory shows. And as I've discussed a million times when discussing this issue, Unions don't just benefit those in the union, they benefit everybody in every workplace. The more that unions exist, the more that non-unionized workplaces have to compete in the labor market for those same workers. So then if you're not unionized in your workplace, that workplace now has to compete with higher wages, better benefits to try and compete with the unionized workplaces. So this is why everybody in the working class should be supporting this effort because it will benefit you. More unions will benefit you even if you are not in a union. And not only that, benefit Amazon all the corporations, which is funny why they're so against it. So yeah, what do you guys say about Lindsey Graham making a fool of himself? No surprise, he always makes a fool of himself, of himself but he especially did it there because he, of course he did. Yep. That's why you should have gotten rid of him in 2020, South Carolina. What the fuck is wrong with you? And I think he even had a progressive to run against him. So what the fuck? All right. Yeah. So now let's get to, oh, dear God, Blair White. Oh, no. What did she say this time to, to self-own, to own the libs? Oh, geez. Here we yeah. go. What did you say this time, Blair? Please don't be as bad as you were in that debate where you kept letting people do transphobic crap to you. Please, can you not be that bad? This is Blair White. So I haven't spoken much about Blair White on the program before, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with her, she's essentially the transgender equivalent of Dave Rubin. She's a willing, useful idiot for conservatives. She enables their transphobia, endorses usually transphobic things and policies, and I'm assuming, hoping at least, that she gets paid for her services. You know, I feel bad for her. It's honestly sad that she does this, and she's willing to throw her own community under a bus, but that's who she is. Basically, a Dave Rubin version uh, for transgender people. So she decided to own the libs, or try to own the libs on Twitter, following news about Joe Biden's administration potentially canceling uh, student loan debt. So this is what she wrote. Imagine believing a five-year-old can pick their gender, but 18-year-olds can't consent to student loans. So she's playing right into this transphobic what? trope that we've seen lately with the Republican Party and their propagandists. You know, no one is trans, no child is trans. They're always, you know, indoctrinated into this woke gender ideology by their liberal parents. Except my question for uh, Blair White is, this you? When did you feel, if you can remember, when did you feel like something was off? That you um, were supposed to be a girl? Like five. At five? Yeah, I remember being in yeah. preschool. Like my, my earliest me memories in life were feeling like the only way I can describe it was like a very intense misalignment between the way I was perceived and the way I had my self-concept. Um, so I would say five, uh, but obviously I didn't have the words to articulate it at five. Is that so? You realized that you were trans when you were five years old. Let's look at that tweet again. Imagine believing a five-year-old can pick their gender, but 18-year-olds can't consent to student loans. Oh, it's so good. This is amazing because it proves that conservatives have no ideology. They're simply reactionaries, plain and simple. I mean, they think that student loan debt cancellation on the left is a good thing. I think it's bad. What's that leftists think that education should be free? I think that's bad. What's that they also believe that healthcare should be free at the point of service and somebody shouldn't die if they can't afford to get healthcare? That's bad. Socialism bad. It's just, it's astonishing to me. They have no unique beliefs that originate from within them. They have no actual ideas about policy. It's just whatever their opponents want, they fight them and say that's bad. It, it's just, it, it's incredible, honestly. It's incredible. Now, what's sad about this situation with uh, Blair White is she thinks that if she can be a useful idiot to the GOP for long enough, eventually they'll accept her. Perhaps they never she will. has this never warped will. view of the GOP oh, and she thinks that, you know, if they see me as one of the good trans people, 
people, then maybe that will be conducive to broader acceptance of trans people. If I can be no, the example that they pop up. But the problem you. is that they... You do remember that debate you had last year, yeah, remember? I mean, I mean, we had John Doyle and that red ice bitch and all the transphobic crap yeah. they said to you. That yeah. was so cringy and, and disgusting. Remember at least one guy pulled a paper file. Yep. They will never accept you. Never, Blair White. And, you know, maybe you're economically conservative and you want to be aligned with the GOP and their propagandists. But the sad fact is they will never, ever support you. They tolerate you insofar as you continue to be useful to them and act as a propaganda tool. Here's the thing. If you're economically conservative, why not just be a, support the Democrats? Because yeah. they're they're do, they're not progressive. They're not doing any yeah. progressive policies economically. But at least they're not going to treat you like shit for being trans. So you get what you want without being degraded and humiliated and discriminated against. Yeah. You know, if they can point to you and say, "Well, our transphobic policy is right because this trans person said so," then they'll continue to use you. But the second that you are not useful to them, they'll toss you aside like that because they don't give a shit about you, Blair White. They will never accept you. Learn. From Dave Rubin. Dave Remember we covered Dave it months ago whenever they had kids. Remember the shit that Rubin got when he yes. became a dad. They're Remember Molly Remember Marla Yiannopoulos, how he just completely vanished. Yep. Remember you, Blair, when like we've just mentioned, that debate you had with those idiots year last year, how they treated you. They're using you as a tool and you're letting them do that. And you're using your identity as a trans woman to make the world a shittier place for other trans people. I, I just, I don't understand why you do that. And she talks about how, you know, oh, well, 18-year-olds can't consent to student like loans. Ruben. As if we have a choice, right? I mean, you think that when we go to college, we think, man, I'm so excited because now I get to get student loans and I, I get to have all this money that I get to pay back. We don't have a fucking choice. It's either you take out the student loans or you don't go to college. That's where we're at in society. Like, my family saved zero. Unless, of course, if you're in a civilized place like, oh, I don't know, maybe Europe? Zero dollars for me to go to college. Oh, how's it down there then? Oh, uh, trans things. No, no, um, co college. Uh, okay. Like, do you have, like, free college in some ways? I'm not going to say it right now. Having no universities is better than living in the system the U.S. has. Oof. College, right so i went to community college and then eventually transferred to a four-year university and then grad school i had to take out student loans in order to get an education and education is a good thing we all are entitled to educations so for you to say oh well you you chose you knew what you were doing to take out those student loans the fuck we did we had no fucking choice in this society every single young person is told if you want to be successful you have to get an education if you want to be economically um, just secure in your life, you have to get an education. So and we need to change that so people like me and others who don't go for college, they can still be fine regardless like it was historically. We need to change it so non-college me non -college graduates will still be fine regardless. You get a good job. And then all these young people, they take out these loans to get educations and then they graduate into an economy where they can only find jobs at fucking Walmart or Starbucks. That's the state of the world. So to say that they consented to that, it's just, it's ridiculous. But you, however, you're consenting to being the GOP's useful idiot. And I genuinely and feel bad for her because I feel like she probably believes that she can actually facilitate greater acceptance of trans people if she puts down trans people and she's like one of the good trans people. I mean, take a look at this clip from 2017. This is a debate between her and Candace Owens on the Dave Rubin show. Oh, and look that, at the way oh, that no, Candace not that Owens debate. disrespects no, her. My, please disrespects not her. That debate. Doesn't even no. value and acknowledge her no, basic human dignity. I don't want to see that clip. I'm not oh, no. using the she pronoun. Uh, not because I, it's not anything to be disrespectful. It's just that a lot of people that follow me don't know that Blair is trans, and a lot of people that follow her, maybe Why don't do know me, vice versa, and I think that it betrays the audience when you make it sound like yeah. this is a petty cat fight and there are two girls sitting across from a table, when in fact it is a grown man sitting across from a grown woman who has had a lot of things to say about me when I've never even met you or said a negative comment about you. Um, so I just want that to be very clear. Happy to for the rest Super of this. Clear. Yeah, it, it should be Super known. Clear. We're both I, adults, you know, you're a grown man. No, no, we're, defin we're definitely adults. I just think it's interesting how you act like you call her a grown man 
Candace, ugh. You're above the ad hominems and you're above attacking someone when in reality, you and I both know that the situation is you're using those pronouns and you're saying what you're saying, calling me a grown man. That's because, not an attack, that's no, a fact. No, no, let me finish It's that. not a uh, fact, Candace, you fucking idiot. You transphobic piece of shit. You're doing that in a way to be passive aggressive and petty, but in a way that your audience doesn't actually read because you do have the very hardcore conservative audience and so they're not really going to read it as petty. Everyone else will. No, I don't want them to think that this is a cat fight between two girls. It's not. I'm saying That's that you are... It, no, it's, it's very important because... It, it really isn't, though. But we can but we can move on because it really isn't about how she addresses me. And me and my biology really think you're a man. I'm happy to call you That's a she totally for the rest so that we can move on from the pronoun thing right. to your question. So you're I would say look, she, look, but look. you have to start by calling me a man. Okay. You're doing propaganda for people uh, like that, that Blair White. Yeah. That's who you're enabling. I mean, you could be trying to... Like, please give me a trigger warning before you do a video of us showing Candace Owens, Blair White, and Rave Dubin. Oh my God, Push for please. tolerance and acceptance. But instead, you want to be their useful idiot. Because I'm one of the good ones. So, they could never treat me bad, except you've already experienced them treating you like shit. Candace Owens, and now because of things you that you tweet, year? saying, oh, yeah. well, a, a five-year-old can't possibly. Look how, um, um, Caitlyn Jenner is tra treated, remember? Yeah. Look how, yeah. oh my God. ...be trans, even though you know that that's not true because you've said yourself that you realized that you were trans when you were five. Now people are going to point to that. Transphobes will say, oh, well, you know what? My child, uh, they're uh, showing signs that they're trans. My son is putting on a dress. So I know that you can't possibly know that you're trans at five. So I'm just going to beat the shit out of them. And, you know, oh, I know no, that this no, is the right no, thing to do because Blair dress. White, a trans oh, person, knows horror. better. And she said you can't possibly be five. So, you know, maybe if I beat my kid, then I could beat the gayness or transness out of and if you did beat your kid for that, guess what? You belong in jail and your kid taken away to someone who actually would love him. Out of him. And also, just because a kid cross-dresses does not even make them gay or trans. People, yeah. like, God. Like, this is perpetually what conservative uh, LGBTQ plus people are used for, right? They're used to validate homophobic and transphobic beliefs. And those who actually are serving as useful idiots... I just, I have no respect for them. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for people like Blair White, but you know, she I, does I, this I, to herself, I have, so. I have a hard time feeling yeah. any sympathy for her because have, she's I've bringing on herself. Negative, I've got negative respect and sympathy for Blair. Yeah, you're- I, 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 I'm gonna say it right now, there is actually a small part of me that um, has actually considered deliberately misgendering just to be an ass, just to be a dick to her, because I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she brings it on herself and she acts like everything's fine when it's not i love that she uh she decided to try to you know uh play to this trope that we're seeing from conservatives that you know this ideology this woke gender ideology is imposed on kids but yeah you know she got debunked by herself when she on joe rogan was honest and talked about how well yeah i actually knew i was trans at a very young age it wasn't imposed on me yeah, we know. So you're a liar. You're basically validating a what we all suspected. That you're disingenuous. And yep. maybe it's for clicks. Maybe it's for cash. Either way, I don't know how you sleep with yourself at night. Have some self-respect and human dignity. Yeah. Don't put yourself through this all for clout or a check. Actually challenge their transphobic beliefs. Stop validating them, Blair White. I mean, I, I just, I, I can't fathom sleeping at night knowing that I'm damaging my own community. But they, but her and Ruben can. It's easy for them. Just think of all the money they get. Oh my God! So what do you guys say about the cringe that she said there? Just to what own the lips. She could have said, so, but I have an idea. So, you were indoctrinated by your liberal parents, hey Blair? Did you know you were said, realized you were trans at five? <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, that was sad. Now, finally, on to the last topic. Fox News wants public schools eliminated. Huh? Now, I haven't watched this. Have you watched it? From Kyle? Uh, I've watched part of it. Well, I'm going to take a guess. Let me guess. Is something involved in CRT? Mm, I think so. If I remember correctly, it's part of it. 
Well, we'll see. All right, guys. So Justin Barragona says Fox News host Kennedy just casually suggests that public school should be eliminated. Quote, a great time in our country's history where we rethink whether or not we have public schools. What? Maybe we should not have the government involved in education at all. That's insane. Let's see what she says. See the fuller comment. Right, religious speech. Yes, and the superintendent has to prove that he was ostracizing players and, you know, not favoring them if they didn't participate. They, so far, what I have seen, they have not proven that. This will be a very important case for religious liberty, uh, but also maybe a great time in our country's history where we rethink whether or not we have public schools. Maybe we should not have the government involved in education at all, uh, so parents and teachers and administrators can make those decisions themselves instead of having the government impose it on them, because it is the public school aspect of this that is creating the legal challenge. Okay. By the way, she, so she's a libertarian. You're going to be unsurprised to learn that. Um, and the thing that can get annoying about libertarians is that they have one answer to everything. It's like, less government, less government, less government, more uh, marketplace. Like, that's, they answer that to everything. Now, I actually have to agree with uh, libertarians on a lot of things. On a lot of, you know, for example, they um, are against the illegal NSA spying. They're against the Patriot Act. We totally agree on that. They're against the drug war. They want to legalize drugs. We totally agree on that. On war... Um, they don't want to wage dumb interventionist wars, wars of aggression. Uh, I agree with them on that. So I like credit. Libertarians basically are good on foreign policy, most social issues, except maybe they're hardcore, like pro gun crap. They're pretty much good on, but on economics, oh my god, they are batshit insane. What could possibly be? They are fucking batshit insane on economics. They words do, and that's why you know some libertarians even watch this show because. Well, they respect that I no governments let corporations take over the world and blow it up. I'm willing to give them their credit where I agree, but um, then when it gets to you know economic issues, this is a an education issue or healthcare issues. I'm like, uh, how do you have the same answer for all of those things? The world is a complex place, and it requires nuance in the conversation and sometimes innovative ideas. And they're just like, nah, just more marketplace, less government. Maybe get rid of public schools, maybe not have the government involved in educa education at all. Wait, so Any all public education? So high schools, middle schools, Any elementary school schools. We, like government care. out of that too? Okay, here. I guess that also apply to homeschool because in Maryland, when I was homeschooled, that was government involvement in that regard because that's how it is in Maryland. So I guess yep. even us mailers can't have homeschool dead, which you guys like apparently, but if it's... Government related, all of a sudden you don't like it? Hmm? Here's what would happen in that system. And this isn't conjecture. This is 100% factual. Only the wealthier kids would be able to afford to go to school. Because, you know, uh, there's middle class people, and there's poor people, and there's working poor people, and it would be hard for them to scrap together the money to send their kid to a school. And not only that, they also, without some sort of government regulation, they're going to just teach whatever they want to teach, which is why usually the private schools are usually Christian religious fundamentalist schools that try to teach their religious bullshit on kids, which I do not want whatsoever. To a private school. Right now it's paid for via taxes, which makes sense. You give everybody an, an equal chance, regardless of where they fall on the, on the income ladder. And if you go back to a system like that, you're going to have only really the wealthy get to be educated and certainly get to continue going up more and more and through higher education. I mean, still, I mean, that's one of the problems with not having free college, right, is that it makes it more difficult for uh, people on the lower end of the economic ladder to really get by. They have to take out massive amount, a massive amount of student loans and that puts them behind the eight ball for when they get out there in the real world. There's all these problems associated with it. She looks at it and she's like, no, actually, the problem is all the government, and let's just get the government out. Now, they're talking about a case here where you had a football coach who was praying um, at, like, the 50-yard line or something, and it's a public school, and so there's a First Amendment issue that came up. There's a separation of the church and state issue that came up, and so they're, they're going through uh, the case now. Um, I don't know how they're going to rule because – on the one hand, the government can't, like, promote a religion, but also they can't really 
prevent people free of their own volition from exercising their own religion. It's going to depend on what it is about, because I've seen a lot of these claims yeah. about, like, coaches and other things, too, in schools, like, being fired because of, like, prayer and stuff like that. From what I see, usually when they're fired, it's more because they're forcing um, students to be involved in the prayer as well, instead of it just being themselves or, like, what or like encouraging kids and all them to do it. But usually it's, no, we're going to make you do it. Just like when I was in school, they would always make me do the Pledge of Allegiance even though I didn't want to do it. So it's sort of like a tough balancing act. So if the coach was just praying and just was doing it on their own, they weren't leading the kids along, and <clears throat> well, then he's allowed to do that. Yeah. If it is just yeah. simply they were praying and not like in trying to make others do it, yeah, they should not be oh. fired for it. That's not a big deal. But if they were forcing students to do it, then it actually is a valid reason to maybe get fired. Because he's not, in that moment, being a representative of the school or being an authority figure. He's just praying on, on his own. Uh, but if he you know, has the kids involved and he sort of forces it upon them, then that is... That guy, the coach, is a representative of the government, and he's uh, you know, putting a particular religious viewpoint through. I'm sure the parents wouldn't like it if they're Christian and you had some, you know, somebody reading from the Bhagavad Gita who was their coach, or you have somebody who's Hindu or Muslim and they were saying Allahu Akbar or whatever. Then they and likewise, I wouldn't like it if if I had kids, they were forced to do this cr um, religious crap. You'd be like, whoa, 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 I don't want this. Separate church and state, but one is Christianity. Since they're Christian, they're like, oh, that's fine. I don't know the facts of the case, so I'm just speculating here in terms of what the facts were on the ground. But the Supreme Court is going to rule on it, obviously. Uh, they have some issue with the case, and they think, like, the whole problem here is that it's a public school anyway. We should have only private schools where, you know, then they could be more welcoming to religion, and they could even enforce a religious viewpoint on people because, you know, it's not the government in that instance. It's a private institution. There's Catholic schools all over the place in, in the U.S. and other sorts of religious schools. So um, there you go. I mean, it's casually floating, like, a horrendous idea. I mean, public education. It seems silly to have the government involved in education at all. Really? That's the only way to give people a fair shot is to have, you know, education is off the table in a civilized society. That's one of the things our tax money goes to. So yeah. you get educated, then you can, you know, have a chance in the future to, to make something of yourself. It becomes a lot harder if you come from a family with no money, they can't afford it, and then what are you going to do? You know, like, like, what do you want to do? Go back to the days of, like child labor and the answer is probably yes because she's against all marketplace regulation she's a libertarian so she probably yeah i don't see the problem with child it's labor really the, someone's well, getting up a place where five-year-old kids run around with nothing on and cleaning houses until i until i make it illegal on vicky two mods <laughs> your kid wants to work let him go work it's like well shouldn't we create a system that gives people more opportunity and educates them and then gives them a chance no because that's, you know, that's big government socialism, and socialism is bad. Hey, y'all, do me a... Yeah, that was really interesting. I'm actually oh. surprised... I guess I shouldn't be because they've complained about this before, but I'm actually surprised that she would be against public schools because of school prayer. I, I probably was going to be something about CRT or transgender, because yeah. that's usually the thing. That's the, no, that's the zeitgeist no. right now. But I'm not surprised either. So... Yeah. yeah, you're a fucking idiot. Public schools are needed, so cope more if you're libertarian crap. And as for the case, like we said, if it's just a coach just praying on their own, yeah, they should not be fired. But if they're pressuring other students to do it, then yeah, that's more of a valid reason to do so. But of course, it's going to the Supreme Court, so since they're full of religious fundamentalists, you know they're going to probably side with them even when they're probably in the wrong and all that, but... That's all we, we just got to wait for that. So we got to see about the Karen here. Karen's going to Karen, especially if they're an extremely religious one who <laughs> thinks that um, the libertarian extremists who think that schools should be illegal and you should be forced <laughs> to teach fundamentalist religious bullshit. <laughs> yep. So that will finally wrap up today's episodes, guys. Cool. So see you guys next time. And the next time.